Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah. This is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm talking about the end of the Polaroid spectra. Polaroid spectra cameras are cameras that Polaroid introduced in the mid-1980s, and the spectras were different, and they were special, and they took different kind of instant film that was actually wider and a different size than 600 and SX70 film that the company had been making for years. And up until about a week ago, it was film that the company Polaroid Originals was still manufacturing in both color and black and white, but not anymore. Polaroid spectra cameras, or image cameras as they were called outside of North America, are definitely much less popular than the 600 and the SX70 cameras that are a little easier to come across sometimes and far more well known in terms of shooting instant film. 600 film and SX70 film are the same size, they take the same kind of cartridge. Spectra film though works kind of differently. See they come in bigger, wider cartridges, but the film overall is still kind of the same. So again, Again, Polaroid manufactured this film along with 600 and SX70 film starting in the 1980s and all the way up until the discontinuation of all of Polaroid's instant film in 2008. And around this time in 2008 it seemed like it was kind of a little hopeless in terms of the future for any of these cameras. But luckily enough a handful of really passionate people stepped in and decided to save Polaroid's instant film. And this was called the Impossible Project. Now it's really important to understand the context of this and how it's kind of all different now from what it used to be. See, the Impossible Project decided to step in and save this film, but in doing so they kind of had to start from scratch from a lot of different aspects of it. See, over the years things like chemical suppliers and regulations and just kind of how manufacturing worked had drastically changed. And not everything that Polaroid originally used to be able to do when manufacturing this film could still be done in sort of a modern, sustainable way when the Impossible Project step in to start doing it. So when you buy Polaroid film today, it's not the same film that it was 20 years ago when these cameras were kind of much more prominent. But the Impossible Project succeeded in what they set out to do, and some of the early stuff is super rough. And in 2017, the Impossible Project rebranded and became Polaroid Originals. And really, that company is the only company out there in the world that's capable of manufacturing this film with the facilities that they have and the knowledge that they have kind of re-engineered over the past decade and so. Except a week ago, they announced that they would be discontinuing all their Spectra film. So of course these are some Spectra cameras. This is a Spectra 1, a Spectra 2, and a Spectra Pro Cam. And these are products of the 80s and the 90s and they're kind of the last classic addition to the Polaroid camera lineup. So why discontinue Spectra film? Well there's a number of different factors in terms of the Spectra specifically. But one of the main ones is that ever since manufacturing Spectra film there's been an ongoing issue where buying the new film and using them in the old camera cameras can result in the film jamming, which means especially if you're paying a bit of a premium in terms of the cost of these film packs, the risk that you run in terms of none of those images coming out and just kind of breaking inside of the camera is kind of a little high. Now ultimately there's a bunch of different explanations as to maybe why this is happening and maybe why Polaroid Originals has decided that instead of trying to improve the film, they will instead discontinue the film. So let's break it down a little bit more. First of all, this film is physically larger than 600 and SX70 film. The bottom area holds a chemical pouch that needs to burst and spread across the image when coming out of the rollers of the Polaroid camera. These Spectra cameras need to be able to eject these larger images, and that does take more power and properly functioning motors, of course. So Polaroid Originals has stated that they do not trust these aging cameras to work with the film properly, even after working to improve things with the film. Now that's not to say this isn't true, because these Spectre cameras can be hit and miss, and the ejection problem is a real problem out there. It's also kind of hard to tell exactly what's going to work and what isn't based on just looking at the camera. The Spectre 1, for example, that is a little more beat up and probably saw a lot more use, does not necessarily eject the film very reliably when I go to use it. But I actually have a Spectre 1 in the box that came to me as well, and this one was almost in like new condition as though it had just never been used. And so this model is super reliable whenever I go to shoot film inside of it. 
I've also found ones like the later models, like this Pro Cam especially, is really reliable and I've never had any ejection problems on models like these ones. But again, it's all just kind of unpredictable because these things are starting to age and we're starting to see these problems now years later after these cameras were manufactured in their prime. So unfortunately, it seems like the Spectres in general maybe just weren't built to last as much as the 600 and the SX70 cameras were. Or there could be other reasons behind the jamming issues as well. So since being released, the film has been unpredictable at best, usually. But also understanding the limitations of the manufacturing process and kind of what's involved in all of this is important to understand maybe why there isn't a simple solution to fixing the Spectre problem. So the newer film is physically different and just thicker than the older Polaroid film was, meaning that it makes sense for there to be problems with using it in these vintage cameras when they were designed to be used with thinner film. All of these new packs of film hold eight shots inside of them when you buy it. But historically, Polaroid packs have always come in packs of 10 shots. And the reason for this difference in how many shots is in a pack now is because the film is just different. My hope was always that Polaroid Originals would continue to kind of try and improve on the film. And I know that's super hard and it's different and it's different with what you have to work with now than you did in the past but continuing to improve on a product that you've decided to resurrect and all the passion that needs to go into it is really important in continuing to have it be relevant. So I'm not super hopeful that we'll see a point where Polaroid has re-engineered things enough to get things back to that kind of classic 10 shots per pack. In their statement about Spectra film and discontinuing it though, they do outline some technical attempts that were made to improve the film, but apparently it just wasn't enough. Now there's also the very real prospect that when they decide to stop manufacturing the film, all of the machinery around the manufacturing process of the film will be decommissioned, which is heartbreaking because it's the only stuff that's out there in the world that can manufacture film for these cameras. And they've been doing it for like 10 or 11 years at this point with bringing that Spectre film back, manufacturing it, selling it, and slowly improving it. But it looks like the Spectre's lifespan is finally at an end. And I understand the limitations and all the difficulties that go into making this stuff, especially if they're working with facilities that have aging machinery and aging resources that they kind of picked up when Polaroid discontinued all the film initially in 2008. And of course, Polaroid Originals kind of has to find a way to survive, especially in a landscape where you can buy cheaper, more reliable instant film from Fuji in the form of their Instax photography line. They're kind of relying heavily on Polaroid as as a brand name, as a piece of nostalgia, and for a lot of these old cameras to shoot their new film. And in the past few years, they've also had a much bigger focus in terms of marketing their own newer camera, which is the Polaroid One Step 2. So in the future, they're just more likely to continue to release slightly different versions of that camera and maybe slightly different versions of the film that just look a little bit different in terms of the design of the frame, different color variations and things like that, as opposed to maybe undertaking any seriously big projects. And all of that is probably far more profitable for them than it would be to continue to try and improve the Spectra stuff. So it's frustrating and upsetting to see them pull the plug on this because there's not really any hope that another company is just going to step in and only make Spectre film. This does kind of seem like it's ultimately very finally the end of the Spectre camera. Even though the 600 film and the SX70 film are essentially the same kind of film, just not as wide as the Spectre film. And I understand from a business standpoint that the Spectre film is just less profitable or worth focusing on but that doesn't mean the decision doesn't suck. And it doesn't mean that a lot of people aren't upset about it because these cameras are fun and the film is really, really nice when it works. But of course, that's when it works. And it is a risk to buy the film and put it into these cameras because it's 
hard to tell when it's going to work and when it's not going to work. Now there are lots of different little ways to kind of work around the jamming issues that people have suggested. There's things like smacking the side of the camera as the film is ejecting, or removing a strip of mylar that's at the front of the cartridges that can sometimes cause a little bit of friction when the film is ejecting. And I mean, whatever works, works, and that's great in order to be able to shoot these cameras and use the film and take those photos. But little kind of tips and tricks like that aren't necessarily the best way to get a company to continue to put a lot of resources into manufacturing a product that isn't necessarily reliable and that maybe a lot of people are upset about when it doesn't work. And I'm definitely going to miss this stuff and I'm just not looking forward to the day when people are just hoarding all this film and selling it for crazy prices online because it's the last batch of Spectre film. So unfortunately now as I talk about Spectra cameras, then I have to say that if you're looking at getting into shooting Polaroid film and using Polaroid cameras, then the Spectra cameras are Polaroid cameras to avoid. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I continue to kind of look at these different things and cover kind of some news stories about this stuff as well. And if you're interested in supporting the channel at all, you can head over to the Analog Resurgence Patreon. There is a link to that in the description as well. And to all of you who are bummed out about losing Spectre film and just the future of this stuff in general, then I am in full support with you because uh, I'm about as upset about it as anybody is. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Hey, I just want to give a special thank you to all the amazing people over on the Analog Resurgence Patreon who have helped support the channel over the last month. They are Benjamin MacArthur, Abby Henderson, Futigu, Nakia Jones, Carson Fuller, Ramblings from Canada, Bearded, Chaz Alling, Colin Jackson, David Pirinelli, Derek Konigsberg, Bala Sosu, Caesar, Taylor Kuzella, Trey Pipmeyer, Ian Farber, Paul Wagner, Maya Metaphobia, Juliana Lopetalina, Garuv Pai, Jeremy Lee Camp, and K Dubs as well as an extra special shout out to Carson Fuller and David Pirinelli, who've added a little extra support to the channel over on the Analog Resurgence Patreon.